Hey guys, what's going on? And thanks for taking time to check out the video. Much appreciated. And today we got a really good tip for you guys. I'm going to share with you guys uh, the jig modification that I came up with that allowed me to climb 60 places in the Toyota Series tournament on Grand Lake last week. It was a modification built out of necessity. Um, I'm going to explain it and I'm going to basically build a jig in front of you guys. And hopefully it'll help you guys catch you a few more fish. But hey, before we get started, a couple different things. Just wanted to remind everybody tomorrow night from uh, 7 to about 8.30 p.m., Johnny and I have our weekly uh, live podcast on Fish the Moment Live YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be going all over stuff about the spawn tomorrow. It's going to be a really good hour and a half time. And then also this coming Thursday, Johnny and I have our next virtual seminar. This is going to be a seminar from 6 to 9 p.m. You can sign up for it on fishthemoment.com. It's going to be about everything about post-spawn, everything that you could possibly know about post-spawn fishing uh, or want to know. Uh, Johnny's going to take care of all the offshore stuff. I'm going to take care of all the bank stuff. And it's going to be an info-packed three hours, I can promise you. But hey, before we get started, the boys wanted to say hi here. There's Elliot. Hi. Say hi. And there's Elijah. Say hi. Hi. Okay. They wanted to say hi. Hi, real quick before we get started on the tip here. So anyway, let's get started with it. And I'm going to sort of show you guys a little bit and sort of explain to you what happened last week in the tournament for me to come up with this modification I'm going to show you guys. Um, in practice down there and in the tournament, the first day of the tournament, I was catching my fish on just a, a orange, just brown, red looking chatterbait, a crawfish pattern. Um, this is, you know, popular color this time of year when the fish in the pre-spawn and the spawn when they're starting to feed up on crawdads. Works really good in off-colored water. I don't think, I wasn't the only one. I think a lot of guys were throwing that same basic color pattern. But what happened was the first day of the tournament for me, they just weren't biting it very good. They just weren't, they just, I couldn't get the fish going on it like what I thought I would. And what got me on this jig thing was at the end of the day on that first day of the tournament, um, I had skipped the jig underneath the dock uh, twice actually. And both times I was picking out a backlash, the chatterbait was sitting on the bottom for like, you know, 20 seconds and I lifted up and there was one moving out with it. And I set the hook and caught them both. So that didn't take much to deduce the fact that I knew a jig would work the next day. Um, I didn't make that switch the first day because it was so windy. I still, I still felt that those fish wanted a moving bait, and they did in certain areas. I mean, a lot of guys caught them on chatter baits and spinner baits that first day. So I went back home that night, and I modified a jig up. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a jig color that was unique to the water clarity. And here's the thing you guys got to remember, the, the tip I'm going to share with you guys today. When you're talking about colors, what, I don't care if it's crankbait, spinnerbait, jigs, whatever. Um, don't pay that much attention to matching the hatch or trying to imitate the crawfish. You need to pay more attention to the water clarity and the light intensity. And that's one of the big secrets I'm going to give you guys is that you need to have a bait whatever the situation is, it has a little bit of a glow to it that creates a subtlety yet stands out at the same time a little bit. You don't want too much. You don't want a bait that is so um, blends with everything that it's invisible and you don't want a bait that stands out so much that it overpowers the water clarity. So there's a fine line to creating the exact right color to match the water clarity and uh, sky conditions. So let's get into it. I'm going to show you guys what I came up with with Grant a little bit here. Um, first of all, I want to get into this deal about tying skirts. I mean, guys, one of the biggest things you can do to help your fishing is learn to not only use different dyes. I use all different type of dyes you can think about, different colors, but learn to tie skirts. And, you know, this is my skirt tying tool. You know, it's the most valuable thing that I got. This is one of the most valuable boxes that I have. This is my skirt box. Show you guys a quick peek in here a little bit. It's packed with skirts. You can see in there every different color that you could possibly want, you know, and, and um, probably got 50 different types of skirt colors in there. So before we get into this, tying the skirts is going to be a big deal. So guys, are, boys are playing over there. So let's get into it. The, the skirt color that I came up with here um, for the situation for the water clarity that I was in was an orange skirt and this particular orange skirt 
it was something that really matched the water clarity good as far as you know getting that you know color that st stood out just a little bit hold on i'm gonna have to take care of these boys for a second okay, i had to get the boys squared away there they get really excited when the video camera's on so anyway got them back inside watching cartoons let's get into this Okay, the skirt that I came up with was an orange skirt, solid orange skirt. And I, you know, there's probably very few guys out there that have used a solid orange jig skirt. And to be honest, I don't use them, use them either, you know, very often. But the water clarity was really set up perfect for this particular setup. On this, I was using a 3 8 ounce uh, Lunker Lear jig. Um, and I'm going to rig it up here and sort of show you guys the setup. I'm real particular putting my skirts on my jigs because I am a, a stickler for the skirt looking just right. So once you get it on there, I spend a lot of time, you know, distributing the strands out perfectly even. I want that jig to be perfect because a jig is one of those baits that the bass will inspect it. They nose down on it. They look at it. They check it out. And uh, I'm, I just think the more natural that you can get this thing to look, the more bites you're going to get. So really spend some time when you put your jig skirt on to get the skirts uh, uh, going around the jig completely uniform. It's really nice looking like that. Okay, so that's the skirt. We're going to put that down here. The next aspect of this was, was one of the most important aspects too is the trailer setup. In this tournament, the, the trailer I was using at Grand last week was the Zoom Super Chunk like here. One of my favorite trailers to make. First thing I did to it, was notice how thick this is right here see this the thickness of it i'm going to take and i'm going to trim at least half of that meat off there you don't need that on there it's just going to actually cut you know that that much off of it towards it's that thin so you can see you know i don't have hardly any plastic to penetrate it gives me more of a bite gap to penetrate that next thing i did got my black dye here and th this color, like I said, I'll explain a little bit more how I came up with this because I, I'm a, I, I just, I experiment with colors all the time. I very seldom use the stock color of anything. Coming in about halfway, not quite halfway with black dye like that on the pumpkin. This dye is messy guys. <laughs> you gotta really, I've never seen it's like if you got an open bottle of dye in your boat, I don't care what's going to happen. I don't care how careful you are with it. it you're going to spill it. Dye is like so nasty to mess with. Next, I got a bottle of red here. And there, I use every color of dye that's made, you know, in different, different lure applications. Hard baits, soft baits, it don't matter. So I'm taking the red and I'm putting their, their tails in. down there got red like that probably a color you guys haven't seen a whole lot i doubt if uh, there's many people that do with this like the okay so i've got my black with red on there next thing i do is thread it on now as far as putting the jig on sometimes i thread it like a frog like a pork frog and sometimes i thread it just depends on the profile I want to I want to create. I actually put it on like a frog more if I'm fishing fairly clear water, like water visibility over three feet. But when I'm uh, fishing a little bit more stained water, I like to thread it on uh, like this. And this is sort of hard to do. As you can see like that, I've got it real thin. So you've got to take a lot of time coming in there. And I'll thread it up like that. So I've got, <clears throat> got my chunk rigged up like this. Now the next thing you do is you got to do some trimming on it. You know, I, I, I like all my skirt uh, skirts to be really irregular in different lengths. I don't want them uniform at all. And I don't want the legs on the trailer to be impacted any by uh, my, my uh, skirt materials. So I'm trimming it all off the skirts there. Sticking to a little bit there, and spend some time with this. You know, once you when you're when you're rigging up your jigs, you know, spend some time looking to that attention to detail. So there, there's the final product. There, this is the jig modification that I used at Grand to uh, 
jumped 60 places the second day of the tournament. I caught 15 pounds on this jig the second day. Second boat dock I went to, I caught a five and a half pounder, which was a game changer. That's the fish you need to really kick you up to that bigger weight. And then I caught like 10 or 12 other keepers the rest of the day on there. But like I said, this is a modification, jig modification that you know you probably haven't seen before. I'm sure very few people have used this color. And again, when I'm talking about this jig modification color, it's all centers around water clarity. Um, once you have more experience in fishing and bass fishing, um, you begin to realize that water clarities dictate different type of colors based upon the season because when you have 60 degree water, which we have around the country right now in the springtime of the year, it's a completely different variable than 60 degree water in the fall time of the year, even given the same clarity. So each particular season has color patterns that are unique to themselves. 60 degree water and water visibility, like we had at Grand Lake, that was maybe 12 inches, anywhere between, maybe not even 12 inches, maybe like eight to 12 inches. Anytime I've got those situations, I'm going with something like this. I'm going with my blacks, my reds, my oranges, maybe a little bit of browns. But if the same situation, say, was in October, and we're dealing with 60 degree water in October, we're dealing with water visibility of 12 inches, at that time of year, and we'll, I'll do videos on this later, I'm going to be using a shad pattern. I'd be using like a white jig with maybe some silver in it. Um, simply because in the fall time of the year they're feeding more heavily on shad than they are like right now when they're feeding primarily on crawfish. So there's a lot of different variables to it. Again, that's why I say bass fishing is one of the most complicated sports in the world is simply because of these variables. But what I'm going to try to do on the channel is I'm going to try to keep you guys, and this is going to take years to do. I mean, you could decades to do. I'm going to try to share with you guys little tips like this that help specifically under certain situations, certain seasons, certain different water conditions. And those conditions are always changing. They're, they're never static. Nothing in fishing stays the same. Nothing is ever the same. Year to year, there's always subtle differences. But anyway, I just wanted to share this with you guys. This is my secret jig modification color. Big comeback at Grand Lake at last week of the Toyota Series. Uh, put me up into the top 40 into the uh, Toyota Series championship cut. So got one more tournament left at Lake Dardanelle and hopefully I can uh, hold my position or move up and qualify for that Toyota championship and have a shot at the 250,000 in there. So anyway, guys, much appreciated you tuning into the channel. Um, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to order any of the stuff I'm talking about right here, please use the Tackle Warehouse Fish the Moment link. Uh, Johnny and I get a small percentage of that profit. So if you guys want to help support the channels, that's one way to do it. And I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll include that link in the description. And subscribe if you haven't. One more thing. Much appreciated there, too. So we'll be back soon with another one. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And I uh, hope you're doing well. See you.